Good morning and welcome to Squawk 7000. Well, we're here in Burr and it is just after half past eight in the morning on Saturday the 15th of April. And once again, it's the annual Burr breakfast fly-in. The volunteers are already on the field. The airfield is looking pristine. Marshallers are over in one corner having a bit of a briefing as to where they're going to be parking the aircraft. And, uh, well, the people involved with the breakfast have already started. The boilers are on and uh, very shortly there'll be the smell of, of bacon wafting through the air. Stay with us on this particular episode of Squawk 7000 and we'll get a chance to chat to some of the people here, find out about the event and bring you a flavour of aviation on a day that is often recognised as the official start of the flying season in Ireland. Colm Wright, this event wouldn't happen today, I suppose, without the support of the Ormond Flying Club. And you've a nice busy year ahead. We have. We've lots going on. Yeah, well, we're very nervous during the week about the runway, but I just did a runway inspection there and all is good. So we're very, very happy. Runway is good and hard and we're, we're happy that we can proceed with this event this morning. Uh, last year, tremendous success and nearly 100 aircraft. Uh, looking for the same today, I'd say. Yeah, well, we're more, most importantly, we're looking for the money. <laughs> because, you know, I think last year we raised, what was it, 20 grand or something yeah. for St. Vincent de Paul here in Burr, and we're hoping to get that and maybe a bit more. So, like, if guys don't arrive in planes, if they come by car and they still donate their money, we'll be delighted, you know. Yeah. But, look, the day is in it. We should have close to 100 aircraft today, which would be great. And the money, also, well, we also find out, of course, goes locally to the local events. It all stays in Burr, yeah. yeah, which is great. And I mean, in fairness to Shea, it's, it, he heads up all this event and we just roll in behind him and support the, the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, he's raised so much money for St. Vincent de Paul here over the years, which is great. I think it's over 300,000 now at this point. So it's, it's fantastic. And of course, we're planning for our big event in August, which is the air show. Yeah. Burr has a great reputation because people get up close and personal. It's fantastic, yeah. I mean, you're, the the crowd line is right beside the aircraft, which is fantastic here. And anyone that has visited here in the past knows that. To get to meet the pilots, we do this pilot parade here every year as well, which is <clears throat> it's unique. Burr is unique that we're able to do that. We call it a boutique-style air show, <laughs> which is great, yeah. you know. We have the P-51 Mustang is coming back, Miss Helen, which we're delighted about. We have the Falcons confirmed. We have the Ravens coming from the UK. Dave Bruton, we've Eddie Goggins, the usual Irish constingency. Mm. Well, there's a few more to be confirmed. Right, well, <coughs> breakfast is already on. We're going to go and talk to a few more people. Colin, thanks for chatting to us. Thank you. Have a great day. Aaron Carter for Vince Vincent de Paul in Burr and you know we're back again for another wonderful breakfast fly-in uh, still in the glow of last year Absolutely and it's uh, a gorgeous morning here in Burr sun is shining so somebody is looking down on us and uh, we're delighted to be here I would like to thank all our sponsors we definitely want to thank uh, the venue here the Burr Flying Club uh, for giving us this lovely venue to all the people who support us I'm not going to start naming them. I know, it would be a long list now, wouldn't it? A long, long list, and I could leave someone out. But do you know, when we talked last year, you were, you were reminding us about how you know the money raised here has a real importance to it. And, and you were starting to give us an idea that people were feeling the impact of, of costs of living. And here we are a year later, 2023. Paint a picture for us. Well, this year it's, it's different with the food poverty. We always had food poverty. Now we have uh, electricity, heating poverty. We have all of that. We have people losing their jobs. We actually have a new cohort of people coming to us, people that are actually working, but they probably be on a very low wage. They cannot manage, and their their mortgages, everything like that. So that's a real thing for us. Now we cover bar here, population about five five and a half thousand, but we also cover all the villages around the area, which in total is about twelve. So we have a huge area to cover. What keeps you going? The feel-good factor from it. Mm -hmm. We're all volunteers in Burr and it's being able to help people and we've never refused anybody. If it's even if it's just a a box of food Mm. and you just go home in the evening, you've done your job. And the thing is, I suppose, I've trained my mind not to think too much about it when I go home because uh, there is a lot of... 
a lot of issues out there, mental issues. You come across once you might be going to a house to visit someone who's looking for a bit of help, but you might come across something else. Mm. There's a bigger issue once you go in there. And some people just want to talk to a stranger and mm. tell them your problems. And But absolutely love it. Love it. Time to go get some breakfast, Marion Carter. Yeah. Thanks for chatting to us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Paddy Kilduff was on his way to get breakfast. I'm standing now uh, right beside where the food is and I'm between a man and his breakfast, which is not generally a good idea. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. And you are in charge of the marshals today? We're in charge of the marshals. We're follow me aircraft marshals. Our, our main man, John McDermott, who you know, yes, is in Florida at the moment, but we're, we'll survive without him. Paddy, tell me about the uh, all the men in orange, and you have a, actually a very important job here today because all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of aeroplanes and a lot of propellers. It, it is indeed, and uh, our, our main job is to make sure that nobody walks towards the propellers uh, particularly need to keep the public off the, the parking area and that's well marked off today uh, we also are responsible for keeping the airplanes apart making sure taxiing on bumpy grounds is different to taxiing on the tarmac of the airport in that wing tips can't go over one another because they might bump into one another so generally that's getting the pilots to follow our directions and uh, we'll keep them safe What keeps you involved in an event like this? Uh, I've been involved with. That's our first arrival. That's I might have to go. Have to go. I'll walk with you. Yeah. <laughs> no, the actually look as if we do. It's uh, oh, it's Jerry Humphreys. It's Jerry Humphreys, and he's yeah. just put the smoke on and giving us a a little typical ar- arrival gesture on his part in a beautiful, clear blue sky. It's amazing, isn't it? It is indeed. We feel, we feel more like we're in Florida than, than Joe is, <laughs> Joe you know, is at the I moment. Know. I noticed all of your gang who were going to talk to me have all disappeared, so I'll let, let you get off, chase them back in and enjoy your breakfast. Okay, Thanks great. for chatting Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Good morning. Jerry Humphreys, welcome to Burr. We just heard your arrival a, a couple of seconds ago on the podcast. And uh, What's the flying conditions like today? On the way here, the weather conditions were perfect for flying. Uh, it's that early morning, crisp, clean, cold air with a tiny hint of a layer of thin fog which you get up above and you think wow this is it's great to be alive I knew you'd paint a nice word picture for me now you're also the first person wearing the red hat <laughs> you know that well, this somebody has been... arrived at the cockpit when I landed and, and handed me a freebie I thought you know what yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> All the pilots arriving today are actually wearing a hat which has been sponsored by SNBC Aviation and it's, it's, it's lovely, I suppose, to mark the event as well. Uh, you've been at a few of these now. Indeed, and uh, they get better and better and although I'm one of the first arrivals here, I can tell with the number of organisers and volunteers you've got around here, I can taste the sausages already I, I, and so I know pi- it's going to be the do best anything yet. for a breakfast, it's definitely true. Well, listen, we look forward to seeing, uh, I'm sure you'll do a fly pass at some stage uh, in, in the proceedings today and enjoy well, it. Well, if it's quiet and there's no one around and everybody wants me, I might let off a bit of smoke or something like that. You never know. I don't think that will stop you. Jerry, thank you. Arrival of the S92, stepping out of it this morning, a cold Saturday morning. Rob Tatton, Rob, welcome to Bar. Great to be here. It's great, a, yeah. A busy activity and a busy year for you guys. Yes, it, it has been. And what, what's happened this year? I suppose a big thing for us is we've completed our Envis training, which is night vision, and um, uh, for the guys to be able to see in the dark at night, they wear the Envis goggles, which is a huge safety enhancement for the service that we provide to the state. Uh, so we've all crew done except for where we have new crew that have only just joined us recently so their training will start pretty soon now when you say crew is this the, uh, the pilots and the people in the back have the ability to see in the dark yes effectively the uh, pilots and the tech crew will wear the uh, night vision goggles when they're out at missions at night so it aids uh, it also aids uh, as well as the safety of being able to see in the dark but it aids to be able to find people uh, and an event like this of course is an opportunity to remind people of, of the work that you do it's been continuing now for how long? 
Oh, we're, we, we're providing the service CHC have been contracted to the Irish Coast Guard for well over 20 years now. Um, and the current contract uh, is actually in the process of tendering at the moment. So the tender result, tenders are all submitted, the, the, the votes are in and been counted, as you say. And we expect to, to I would say, the latest will be July before... Uh, uh, and we'll hear the result, you and, know. And of course, when you think about that, twenty years that you accumulate in a massive amount of knowledge in it in terms of how to run a service like that. Oh, absolutely! Like the crew, uh, some of our crew have come out of the Air Corps where they used to do the service. So, well over twenty years, we have one. Uh, we have one individual, uh, Mick Tracy. Actually, he's with us, and uh, if he's he, he retired and he came back, he's doing a bit of contracting for us. But if he's still involved with us next year, he's been fifty years involved in uh, search and rescue. Mm. What about the opportunity for new recruits? Yes, uh, we're, we're, we're recruiting at the moment. Um, we have brought in a number of pilots in the, la- in, in the last 12 months. We've brought in some new tech crew uh, and we're still recruiting. Um, all uh, trying to plan for the next contract. And also um, we're trying to introduce with the authority FRMS, which is Fatigue Risk Management System. Uh, and if we are able to achieve that with the work we're doing, we'd be the first AOC in country to have FRMS. And I, I include the fixed wing. Roy O'Connor, they, we're standing here in Burr with the uh, sound of rotors running in the background and, and you're here with two aircraft today. Uh, yes, we have two uh, 135 uh, helicopters down today. Uh, one of them is part of an uh, uh, ongoing helicopter conversion training. So they'll continue on to Shannon later and we'll head back to Baal then in the other one. And your support for events like this is, is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, since I took over, my whole piece has been to reach out to the uh, community because... Um, uh, aviation in Ireland is such an important piece such a history I suppose in Ireland of aviation and from the Air Corps we had our centenary last year uh, we've been certainly part of that I suppose since the formation of the state and I suppose all our personnel, pilots, technicians all our personnel who are in the Air Corps come from all streams around uh, the uh, the country and events like this does put people in, gives them an insight into aviation and certainly it's a competitive market out there I suppose at the moment with people looking for people to join um, but we're certainly part of the, the the career profile I suppose for young people looking for a career in aviation. I was going to say that to you, there have been some recruitments recently, you're certainly advertising for them uh, Yes, well we, we have an a- annual a- advertisement I suppose in terms of um, uh, cadet pilots, uh, technicians uh, and then what we call general service personnel who can come in and they can go into any of our various roles whether it's air crew, photographers uh, sense and radar operators so we have a huge uh, uh, opportunity I suppose for young people to come in and whether they spend their whole career or spend a few years in the organisation, uh, certainly they all benefit from uh, being there. Uh, difficult one to ask you to summarise but what's the sort of the characteristic of somebody who succeeds uh, in a career like that? Um, I, I suppose there's no one personality uh, and that's the I suppose our strength in the Air Corps um, that uh, there's no particular type of individual you want uh, it's a very much a team effort for everything that we do uh, and I suppose if you look at us doing an air ambulance or a maritime patrol operation that's just the tip of the spear it's all the support elements uh, your logis- logisticians your safety equipment personnel air traffic control refuelers technicians there's a huge amount of people who enable that first one uh, mission take place so there is no set profile uh, uh, obviously there will be some minimum educational qualifications come in but once they're met uh, it's up to the individual how they present themselves uh, and the selection process uh, tends to depict the people like uh, w- the people who've gone into the organisation certainly uh, thrive and flourish in the organisation and, and to be fair you know you're an example yourself of that the possibility of progression exists uh, yes, I'm 41 <laughs> years in this year, I suppose. So it's uh, yeah, I haven't started off as an apprentice, uh, and in my four years qualified uh, under fo- uh, Anco actually as it was at the time, all those years ago, uh, and then I joined the cadets. Uh, and yeah, for me, it's the pinnacle of my career here. And as I um, head head towards the retirement piece in a couple of years, uh, it's fantastic to be ahead of such a fantastic organisation. And finally, later in the year, in, uh, 1963 was an important date for the Air Corps, and here we are in 2023. Yes, um, so we celebrate 60 years of helicopter, helicopter operations. Uh, that winter, 62, 63, was quite severe, uh, and they bought the first of the Alouette 3 helicopters. Uh, they served a total of 44 years with us. So later on in November, we'll be celebrating the actual 60th anniversary uh, of, of the helicopters uh, coming into service. Uh, and if you look, I suppose, at the background of what we've done over the year, the search and rescue, air ambulance, uh, aeromedical flights, uh, uh, I suppose uh, relief during severe uh, weather events and that as well it's been a continuous uh, uh, evolution I suppose of heli, o- heli operations in Ireland uh, and the personnel 
number three operations wing is the most decorated unit in the defence forces 14 distinguished service medals from all the rescues they would have done uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s uh, and um, and even the current chief of staff Sean Clancy uh, was, a, was a certain rescue pilot as well during that time and his pedigree is in, in helicopter flying so I think uh, and, and I suppose the personnel who served in the Air Corps have gone out around the country and worldwide uh, we fed into the greater piece of Ireland and the whole aviation piece so it's um, uh, number three operations wing as part of the air corps has a unique history i suppose uh, and this year gives the opportunity to celebrate that and final piece for our 100 years we had helicopters in operation for 60 of those 100 years uh, so it's an extremely important part of our history and heritage it's, it's a massive set of experience rory connor thank you for talking to us thank you very much michael thank you very much departures approved Conor McCarthy, welcome to Burr. Always great to see you supporting the event and uh, the, the funds that are being raised here as well. Thanks very much, Michael. Yes, we're delighted uh, to be here on behalf of Emerald Airlines and uh, it's a great event. Love to support it. And uh, the wider aviation community that feeds us all in the end is, is always worth supporting. So, How's the year looking for you? Year's looking very good. Uh, we've actually not seen any of the fall off in demand that people might have been predicting after the first uh, year after COVID, um, and we expect to double our passenger numbers this year to two million. Mm-hmm. And uh, next week we take delivery of our sixteenth ATR seventy two. So wow, it's all go. Uh, still recruiting like I mad. I say that you know sixteen airplanes. You're looking for people to fly them, service them, and, and look after them. Yeah, we, now we've a lot in the pipeline. Obviously, in advance of the aircraft arriving, but you know we're getting a seventeen in the next two months as well and uh, yeah we're always looking to hire more pilots engineers and cabin crew and it's, it's been great yeah, it's been really great but very busy obviously and you also took a fairly uh, interesting approach when you decided you were going to look after your own handling yeah we did um, look it's so important to have your flights going on time and turned around in time and we just found that with the you know the strains after Covid a lot of people hadn't returned to aviation and we felt we had to take matters into our own hands and, and stabilise our, our ground operations we got that running we went solo in December and we've now got a really wonderful ground handling team and we're also, also doing our own catering logistics as well with that group and it, it just makes a big difference to it into your own hands. I got the sense the way you describe it that there's a, a really interesting energy in the organisation and on, on the people who are working there together. Yeah, we've, we've actually uh, just a wonderful mix of people and you know uh, we've had a new chief executive start last month, that's Keith Butler and Keith joins us from uh, CAE Park where he was CEO um, but we've a wonderful mix, they come from Stobart mainly uh, but there's a lot of people in there from Ryanair from CityJet, from Aer Lingus and from other walks of life so it, it's just been a wonderful mix of wonderful ingredients and uh, we're enjoying it it's exciting still well thanks for talking to us in Squawk 7000 and I won't get between you and your breakfast <laughs> thank you very much cheers also here in Burr this morning is the chairman of Simtech Aviation Brendan Trainer. Uh, Simtech of course have been terrific supporters of the event here absolutely delighted to support such a wonderful event and uh, see everybody's contribution to the event enthusiasts from all over Ireland coming here What's a very special cause, and I think more so a special cause in the current times we're seeing where with with inflation and cost of living increases. So I think it's great for everybody here to see and hear about the benefits that the Vincent Paul movement does for Ireland and its local community here in Burr. Now, I know you might be too shy to say, but certainly Simtech were very generous in matching the funds raised last year uh, and bringing the total up to €20,000. Well, well, absolutely, and I think it's it, it's um, we're, we're all, we all have to be selective in what charities we can donate to, and unfortunately we can't meet all. But I think this is such a wonderful charity, and it really hits the cold face of the the problems that um, local communities and families are are, are facing. So it's um, more than ever. I think it's a it's a wonderful charity. And of course, for a, a, an organisation like yourselves, it's a good sign if you're in a position to, to be that generous. It means that things are looking good for Simtech Aviation. Recovery is happening. Well, absolutely. I think uh, the the aviation industry gr- grinded to a to a halt with Certainly with, did, with yeah. COVID. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's a bit like it's st- enthusiasts here to, today. It's been a very resilient and fast rec- recovery. And wonderful to see new pilots coming co- coming back, training, have the confidence in the long ter- their long-term futures after a 
two year hiatus so both on the student side of the business um, as you know a lot of our students come from continental Europe yeah. and, and beyond so it's great to see them coming back to, to Ireland for the standard of training. And one of the other things of course you've done is you've uh, brought, brought in the opportunity to uh, attract people from the UK market as well offering CAA uh, ratings. Yeah and I think it's a, it's a testament to the to the innovation in the business obviously Brexit brought challenges but equally it brought um, op- opportunities so we now have a array of courses that are now available to, to, to the UK students in, in Ireland so it's wonderful We've moved over from the hangar where breakfast is underway at Byrne we're now standing beside the steerman beside me is Eamon Brennan who do you know Eamon I have to say at this stage aviation is probably not only running in your blood but it's in your bones Oh, I love it, and and I love a day like today down at the um, Beer Breakfast Flying, yeah. where we have a beautiful day just after Joe v- Biden's visit, and the cream of aviation are here. It's gorgeous to see, and well done to Shea Party. If he didn't do it, nobody else would. I know, and, and you talk about the, the you know the funds that are raised here, but you know, there's a second thing happening as well, which is watching just the community of pilots. I didn't know, and only found out recently. You had a PPL yourself. Yeah, no, I did have a PPL. Yeah, and my my plan is to get it back. I I became the regulator in Ireland and it became uh, <laughs> untenable to have a PPL yourself because yeah. uh, any indiscretion would be uh, yeah, who, yeah. Who, who chases you down uh, so so um, I dropped it then but uh, yeah no I flew in France and I flew in Malaysia I flew in the UK and um, I have about 300 hours so um, you know and basically I learned uh, in Cannes on a DR400 and uh, love it I just love anything around hanging around airfields I love it yeah, and you talk about, you know, why people like flying. Uh, a day like this, you can see people sharing stories, looking at each other's aircraft, swapping the yarns as well. Now, you haven't, of course, completely uh, detached yourself from aviation. Your recent appointment to the Ryanair board, congratulations. Yeah, when I finished up as a director general in Eurocontrol, so I've been appointed on the board of Ryanair. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And... Um just basically to help Irish aviation I'm very keen on kind of promoting aviation generally yeah. and uh, I'm looking forward to Ryanair it's good, good company It's interesting too to see uh, Ireland's place in, in aviation and uh, you know your congratulations is due to you as well and a certain amount of pride I hope you have too about what, where we stand globally now in the world of aviation Well it, globally Ireland's in a very good position I mean just let's look at the, the facts the number one airline in Europe, Ryanair, are um, based in Ireland. You know, they they carry a huge amount of passengers, over 540 aircraft. Uh, that's not mirrored anywhere else in Europe. Yeah. And then you have the leasing industry is basically essentially based in Ireland. You know, half the world's fleet are leased and over three quarters of those are leased from Ireland. And then I think there's a good supply of um, young pilots coming through. I was out with Ryanair there a few weeks ago and I was really pleased to see the amount of effort now they're putting into training pilots, bringing them through the system and it's really good for Irish aviation. The big thing that aviation, the big challenge aviation has in the future is to get the sustainability thing mm. correct. And that's really you're talking about sustainability aviation fuels and we have a big challenge in Europe to try and bring that on on board because the problem is production is low it costs three times what J1 costs and that's the big challenge now if we can get that right you'll get consumer confidence because people still want to travel so I'm very much into kind of green aviation mm. but I'm not into stopping people traveling so we got to f- climb this mountain and make sure it actually happens so there's all kinds of experiments both with Ryanair with British Airways all throughout Europe mm. uh, Ethi had recently had a full SAF flight from Abu Dhabi the whole way right into, into Europe running on 100% SAF but the problem is supply and the problem is that in Europe the um, you know the green deal and the green package is more based on regulations whereas in America with Joe Biden just haven't left they have a thing called the IRA Act which is the Infrastructure Act and that's more based on incentives so they're more into incentivizing you for producing SAF and making it beneficial and I think we got to turn the corner a little bit in Europe and that to make sure that we don't lose out that the SAF production isn't in America and not in Europe now back to you and the flying for a bit because fellas who start off with a hobby and turn it into a, a career and here you are turning it back into a hobby again yeah no I want to t- turn it back into a hobby I mean I'm lucky enough like I mean when you finish up I was the regulator in Ireland for years and the, run, ran the NSP and mm. Euro control it's nice to get back to just be able to wander around a field like this and enjoy it on a day and hopefully I'll get back in the cockpit as well and have a few part time jobs and do things I want to do you know I'm still working effectively but mm. like um, not as much and I, I don't want to be waking up in the morning and wondering what's happening in Ath- Athens or Amsterdam I, I, can't, or I can't even believe that would be the case anymore for you. Well, listen, happy flying and we look forward to seeing you at some more airfield events. Okay Michael, great to see you. Take care. And we'll be back at the Burr Breakfast Fly-In after this short break. Hello, Donald Levant from Western Airport. Donald, it's a fantastic event here today and to be fair, Western 
does the same as well. We do, but we can't organise the weather just as well. <laughs> so, and the, you know, the truth of that is that uh, safety is paramount, so there's no point in asking people in VFR environment to come in in conditions that are either too windy or the cloud is too low. So uh, we we'll hope for and pray for a better day in July this year. And that's what I suppose you and I really should be focusing on is the July event. Part of, of course, with the, the weekend of aviation with the Bray Air Show, but on the Saturday morning, an opportunity for people to show their generosity. Absolutely. Uh, we got great support last year for those that came out. In fact, we're, we say there were 350 people there. There were 500 breakfasts consumed. <laughs> so some people had Some people were one. hungry. <laughs> That's OK. Uh, but the truth is, those 350 people gave us a lot of money for the local events in Paul. So we have the four conferences around us in, uh, in Maynooth and uh, Leakslip, Selbridge and Lucan. And they've all benefited. But they've given their bit too to society, a lot more than we can do. And we really appreciate it. Their 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 their, their um, volunteers were tremendously helpful to us on the day. They're now experienced, so they'll be out next July, whether they know it or not yet, to help us out again. But the work is great that the Vincent Paul do, and we're delighted to be a part of it. And you know, as you say too, you've got people here who obviously have to have a, a bob or two if they're going to fly as part of their hobby, showing also some generosity to those who need it. I think that's a very valid point and I think it's a very good synergy between people who can afford to spend on a, an expensive leisure, leisure activity like flying to be able to uh, dip their hands in their pockets and help out those that maybe are less, 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 more in need and more DD is what I really should say. Now in the meantime, uh, for any of our general aviation audience who are listening, uh, you would be encouraging them to get themselves sorted out and get into Weston. Well, there's a few things going on. I mean, we want to make it attractive, first of all. There's a fantastic... and, and a, use that word in te- quite quite intentionally in a fantastic restaurant and cafe opening uh, sometime between the 11th of May which I think is optimistic yeah. and uh, early in June but right. certainly it's it's ready to go I mean the, the facility is ready we're just waiting to finish some of the planning biz, uh, building issues but the cafe will be absolutely perfect for people to pop in meet their friends have a coffee and a scone and we'll be putting some sort of a deal together to provide a landing fee, coffee and a scone to get you started. Not necessarily the second time, but the first time certainly we will. And uh, that should make it attractive. But the more professional side of it, if you like, without getting too 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 technical, is we're very close to the Dublin zone. And I know there's a reluctance on the part of some GA pilots to come near us for that very reason. I'd say please come along, bring your map, know where Kilcock is, know where Maynooth is, know where the Liffey runs down to the Pigeon House if you're coming from the east and use your visual cues to get in you'll have to listen out to people like Emirates and Etihad and Ryanair on the, on the frequency don't be put off by that uh, use your own airmanship get in, come and visit us have a coffee, have a scone and come back and you recently launched a new website as well with the, all that information available too we did, we're pleased enough the website, it's important we keep in mind it's, it's, it's a growing and living item and we'll continue to update it as things change. I mean, we we're, we've plans for the runway as well. Not changing it very much, but uh, uh, re- reconfiguring it slightly and putting in some runway lights so that we can use it a little bit more than uh, has been the case up to now. And also for identification when the weather's not great so people can see it. So there's a lot going on on the airfield. Uh, that's taking a little longer than we would have liked. Uh, the terminal itself and the briefing rooms, uh, they're in good nick and they'll be all up and running for the summer. So we look forward to seeing everybody in July. But um, before that, uh, if it's a suitable day and you feel like coming to Weston, please do. And the coffee really won't be available till around about the beginning of June. <laughs> so thanks very much indeed. Thanks very much, Michael. Hi, I'm Jason Phelan and I'm here at Burr Airfield and uh, I'm with uh, Captain Paddy and Lucky. Now, when we say Captain Paddy and Lucky, regular listeners to Squawk 7000 will probably know the story because we've been following their adventures for those that don't, you better fill us in. Hello. Yes, so um, Captain Paddy and Lucky are flying all over Ireland, UK, and so far they've been to uh, Boston, USA, and Australia. And they're raising awareness and funds for Laurel Inn Children's Hospice and Dogs Trust Ireland. And we're not talking about two people, we're talking about two bears who even have their own ID at this stage. They do indeed, yes. And they've got their high vis jackets on today. And um, I've actually just had confirmed last night they're actually going to spend nearly two weeks with Ryanair flying across uh, Europe on many destinations. Excellent, congratulations. And of course they're just back from a period of service in the nation's defence. They did indeed. They were with the Irish Air Corps for 
approximately 31 days, went through recruitment training and they got to fly in the majority of the Irish Air Corps um, aircraft. So they had an amazing time. And while we might be having a bit of fun, of course, there's a really important message behind this. They've been, they're involved in, as are you, the raising of funds. That's it, that's correct. So uh, we actually went to visit Laurel Lynn Children's Hospice on Thursday and about a month ago we were invited along to Dogs Trust Island as well. So we got to see the great work that both charities that we're raising awareness funds for and um, Laurel Lynn and Dogs Trust are both important to me. I have my own rescue dog and um, my six-year-old nephew, who uh, is a huge fan of Captain Paddy and Lucky, was the inspiration for choosing Laurel Lynn. Well, we wish you all the very best with their adventures and we maybe you'll keep us up to date on how they get on with Ryanair. I will indeed, yes. And uh, I think they're quite looking forward to getting a few more destinations under their belt. Jim Gavin, here beside the steerman, you came down in the aircraft. Yes, I came down with in Sean Bennett's uh, Boeing Stearman, built in 1949. Uh, we came down 1,000 feet from Lines Estate. Um, I think it's about maybe that's the temperature, maybe about minus, about, <laughs> about minus five degrees, maybe. <laughs> you uh, have to be dressed for it, don't it, you? You do indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we're, we're well wrapped up, and we had a beautiful flight down, and uh, what a reception here in Beer. Uh, phenomenal turnout today uh, for a, for a brilliant cause, um, uh, and uh, for a brilliant man in, in Captain Shea Party. He's a a legend of uh, aviation, uh, an entrepreneur as well, and uh, we're all here to support Shay and su- support. Uh, you know, awfully have a, have um, Clara, have Shane, Larry. Well, you know, yeah. Beer have have a, a great airfield here. Uh, it's it's um, a big part of, of the community, aviation community in Ireland, and we're to support Beer and support. Uh, um, St Vincent de Paul. And your support and interest in aviation continues. It does indeed, yeah. I, I, I just sent a story there. My, my uh, first flight was with, with, um, uh, with Derby Candy many, many years ago oh, in Western. Wow. So yeah. um, that, that's, uh, uh, I, got, I got the flame from there and, and um, I've had a wonderful aviation career and, uh, ever since. And I'm um, so just, just so lucky. It's not a job, it's a passion for us all. It, it's hard to describe to people who can't really see here, but we're here in an airfield, at least 100 aircraft. Must be, yeah. And yeah. a whole lot of pilots. Yeah. And the Conversations, fantastic. It is, and it's uh, it's great. I mean, the big turnout from from the aviation community. It's um, you know, the air traffic control was was very slick coming in. It's, it's all very safe. I think there's more marshers than there is uh, an aircraft. It's it's really really well organised. Great to see. Great management by the. Um, I mean, there must be what there's 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 uh, I think three aircraft in the pattern about five to get airborne. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's it's fantastic and um, yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant we're, we're just uh, as you say telling old old stories and meeting uh, meet, meeting uh, old friends and making new friends the Irish Aviation Authority uh, we're, we're going to be merging with um, our friends in the Commission of Aviation Regulation so what that means for uh, what the authority will be in a few weeks time is that we'll really be a one stop shop Michael for aviation regulation that's from economic regulation passenger consumer rights safety and security um, of the civil aviation sector so it's really exciting times and our colleagues um, in the air traffic control side will, will move out and form a new company called Air Navigation Ireland and a really exciting journey for themselves and their, their boss uh, Peter Carney so yeah Rick, exciting times ahead for both organisations Well we'll let you get back into the aeroplane and safe travel And likewise to you have a safe flight home God bless Shea Party, we started the podcast this morning in a quiet airfield around half past eight in the morning and there wasn't a sinner here. What kind of day has it been? (laughs) (laughs) I think we're all exhausted, Michael. The voice is actually gone. Um, I've never seen a day like it anywhere. Mm. We've been very lucky. The weather, as you saw this morning, was glorious. And we're just on 129 aircraft visitors. The last one in was Golf Echo Papa Alfa Romeo from Menace Gillen, an R22, which, as we said, we haven't seen in a while. Uh, I was talking to Marion and Vincent de Paul, and we got a very generous donation without name checking, but Conor McCarthy gave €3,000. And we think we're up to close to 18 on the day, which is amazing. It means more will come in as well. From it does, yeah, absolutely. And it puts us close to probably just over 340 since we started all this, mm-hmm. doing the golf and mm-hmm. book and other. So, yeah, great. And uh, if I'm allowed. Go on. Can I plug volume two of the book, which will I come out in July? My next question. Yeah. But anyway, you have it. Yeah, so we're out and about getting the Air Corps have sent us some great images, and Frank and Pat, and we were out mm-hmm. with yourself recently, yeah. and it has been an unbelievable success and got us corporate support that we probably wouldn't otherwise have had. The other thing that people who haven't been here today might have seen is the sheer 
pleasure of people talking to each other and catching up and yeah. there was good yeah. old yarns going on it's um, it's the biggest men's shed in the country for the day <laughs> I suppose we'll call it and yeah. if you look at and we talked about numbers there were about 60 volunteers helping out mm. We're guests of the Ormond Flying Club, of Colm, Dave Corboy, Owen Garrity and Tom Rafter. And you saw the running around they did today and the help they gave us. And if I'm leaving anybody out here, you know, just want to thank the Ormond Flying Club. We must have, uh, I think, uh, James, the chef. There's a sausage left in the top. Thousands of sausages, thousands of rashers, (laughs) thousands of black puddings and... um, and it's great, isn't it great? Just yeah, absolutely for the whole country. Day. And as we sort of wrap up our podcast for the day, we'll catch up with you again, I'm sure, in the meantime, but Bray is next. Bray is on the 29th, 30th of July, and Derek Walsh and his team are running a similar event, and we'd love to see everybody on the 29th of July. We have the Wingwalkers in, the Ravens, the Jordanian Falcons, and Mustang, Catalina. So come, you know, come see, and we do the same again. And as uh, DV said in the uh, tower not too long ago, have they no homes to go to? It's been a great day. Momentous. Yeah. Epic. Thanks, Victor. Thank you.